Hey there, I'm going to go through uh, how I modeled the threads on this hat stretcher that we've been uh, looking at. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to take a cylinder and I'm going to cut out all of these grooves um, from it. It's just one of the ways to do it. Might not be the quote unquote right way to do it, but it sure does the trick. Um, I'm going to open a new file. Uh, I'm usually in metrics. So I'm going to change it to inches. I don't remember the dimensions uh, all exactly, but I'm just going to um, kind of guesstimate from what I remember. So we had a uh, one inch diameter thread that was about two inches long. So this is our starting point. Um, this is kind of sort of the, the piece that we're going to be cutting out from. So the next thing I want to do is go into the surface and draw the little teeth that I'm going to uh, be cutting out. I really only need one tooth. Um, so that's uh, what I'm going to draw. Um, I remember the pitch was two inches for 10 teeth. So that gives me a rough idea of how big it should be. I remember that it was also a 90 degree uh, tooth. So that's um, good here. Um, there was like this little flat part uh, on top and I don't know how big it is. I'm gonna estimate it's about 1 32nd of an inch. Um, then I'm going to uh, draw the other um, 45 degree angle. Uh, is that 135? Uh, and then I'm going to create a um, the flat part in the middle. I'm trying to think of what a good way to do that would be. So if I cut this out, I got a point here, I can create a rectangle here, and I know the width should be uh, uh, should be 1 32nd to keep it like the other one. This width um, doesn't really matter. Um, so I'll put it to this. So now I know the intersection point uh, is right here. Um, so I got my two teeth. Sorry, there's a lot of construction lines, but that's just, uh, um, that's not a biggie. Again, I'd rather, I'd try to keep things uh, go pretty fast. Um, so things can get a bit messy. Um, I'm also adding this rectangle on top and uh, that's just the void. Um, when I cut out, I wanna make sure that I'm cutting everything out. So there's not, I'm not, um, I'm going all the way through and that there's not a thin layer of the surface that stays. It's just a bug that I noticed uh, in doing it without. Um, so all in all, this is the shape that I want. This is one tooth that I'm gonna use for cutting. All of the rest here, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we're good to go with that. So I have one, one tooth, um, my cylinder's here. Now what I want to do is create the spiral. Now the way that I, only way that I've figured out how to create a spiral is to add a coil. Um, and then use the coil not for cut for the tooth itself, but just for the spiral that it creates. So um, here I can add a one inch coil. Uh, I'm going to fix the direction. So it goes here for two inches, the full length. Um, it looks a bit weird and that's because the section size is just so large. I'm gonna put it to 132nd and you start seeing that coil appear. Um, the shape that I'm using is triangular. Uh, internal and position outside. And that's because I want that nice triangle just barely touching the cylinder because all I need is that spiral guiding the shape along the cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that as a new body. Um, so here we had the uh, cylinder and turn that off. Now we have um, this coil here and we're pretty much good to go. So here's for the, um, for the fun part, I'm going to select uh, my tooth shape that is all good and ready to go. And I'm going to go create um, sweep. And that means I'm gonna take this profile, I'm gonna take this path, and this is uh, the path that it's going to follow. So I'm just gonna make sure that it is clear. So this path, and that's the spiral that just barely touches uh, the cylinder. And the type that I'm using here is not the single path. I'm also using the what what they have called the guide surface. And the reason for that is that if I don't put this flat uh, piece, the angle of the 
tooth that's being cut starts kind of wobbling. And that's not what, what we want because we want it to be strictly perpendicular, uh, so strictly parallel to the cylinder itself. So um, this is looking good. I'm gonna put it as a new body again, not because I have to, but um, just because it's a little bit easier um, to see all of my uh, shapes. So here I have the, the piece that I'm gonna cut out tool. And all we have to do now, the coil up is basically no longer needed because I got what I needed from it here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the cylinder and I'm gonna cut this cutout piece out of it. I'm gonna keep the tool just so that, uh, again, just to keep my original shapes. If I um, hit okay, and then I can hide the cutting tool. We have a um, beautiful thread um, that's ready here. Now, um, one of the things I like to do is just, like, I find that inserting this is not going to work really well um, because of the, the hard edges. So um, I'll undo this uh, a couple of times and go back to my original cylinder. And before cutting it out, what I'll do is I'll um, take this edge and I'll just add a chamfer on it and say, I don't know, maybe like one eighth of an inch. Um, that looks pretty good. Uh, and now I'll just go down, go do that thing again. So I'm gonna select this cylinder and I'm gonna um, cut out the cutout tool from it. Um, but now if you see, because I had chamfered it, it actually has this nice sort of um, angle that's gonna be a little bit easier to thread into. So just like a uh, nice little touch here. So our, um, our thread itself, is ready. So the the, the thing that's uh, left is just to add the, the body of the handle. Um, the way that I would um, do that is I would probably just draw the profile first and then rotate it uh, across the angle. So to do that, um, go click on this surface uh, and then start uh, from here. And I'm, I remember that the handle is probably about say three uh, three inches. Um, I'm gonna split that in two uh, just because I am going to mirror it. So this is how long my handle is going to be. Uh, I'm going to add a line here. If an inch is the diameter of the thread, let's say maybe the whole thing is say an inch and a half maybe. So I'm gonna say an inch uh, and a half divided by two again, at, it's going to get mirrored. Um, so that's fine. So this kind of gives me the original uh, shape, I'll hide the bodies for now. Um, to get the nice curve in the um, in the handle, I'm gonna use this fit spline tool, which kind of gives me a bit more of a um, kind of like control over here. Um, and if I go up to uh, here and hit enter to create the shape, um, now I have a kind of like a, a nicer um, curve to my, uh, I can tweak as I want it. I got, let's say, this is starting to look um, pretty close to what I want. If I'm looking at the profile uh, of the handle, and then I'm going to close this shape to get a, a full surface. And I'm going to uh, click finish on the sketch, and I'm going to revolve it. It's this shape across this axis. It's 360 degrees, it creates a new body. Um, there you go. And so now we have the thread and a very nice half handle. Um, what now what we're going to do is just start uh, mirroring things. So let's say I want to, the nice thing about it is that because I need a left-handed thread on one side and right-handed thread on the other side, instead of recreating it all, I can just uh, mirror it and that's gonna do exactly that, which is um, create the same thread, but only in reverse direction. So that works out quite nicely for what we're trying to do. So um, here, that's mirrored. I'm gonna take this body and mirror it as well. Uh, so here's one object, uh, mirror plane is here. And voila, I got an error. Compute failed. I'm not sure what happened here. Let's try it again. Um, I'm going to select 
this body and I'm going to mirror it. I'm going to make sure that it's bodies that I'm selecting. So this one and the mirror plane is this. Okay, perfect. Now it looks like it's working and we've got a really nice shape. This is great. Um, nice end, chamfered end on the thread. The thread is looking the shape like we wanted. I mean, the dimensions we can tweak, but all in all, that's looking pretty good. And um, as a bonus, we can also get um, pretty creative with the actual uh, shape of the handle. So for example, if I wanted to uh, add a couple of uh, extra points here. So for example, what I could do is uh, take, um, do maybe something like this, where we've got a bit of a handle on one side and a bit maybe like almost like a finger notch over here and I do that and then all of a sudden we got this nice and fancy shape so lots and lots um, you could do um, but anyway that's uh, that's about it to get this uh, whole thing modeled